I 3D printed a wine dispenser, then I covered it in popsicle sticks, and it actually looks awesome. I 3D pen, 3D pen, stained that, and then A few videos ago, I tried to make a fountain that involved a miniature wine barrel spilling wine out onto a cobblestone street. Instead of doing that though, I ended up just making a wine barrel out of popsicle sticks that I immediately fell in love with. And I stopped the project. There was no way I was going to let my special little barrel be sullied by being part of a subpar design. But I did learn a lot on that project, and I figured it's time to put that knowledge to use. Except this time, instead of making a fountain that looks like it's pumping wine out onto the street, I'd rather make a wine dispenser that actually pumps real wine into my glass. Well, why? Real quick, before we get started, though, why don't you just go ahead and click that subscribe button and get the bell icon on. All right, if you wait until the end, you're going to forget. I know, I do it all the time. Let's just get ahead of this game. Okay? Be sure to smash our like button and subscribe to our channel. Here's the plan. I'm going to design a frame that can hold a peristaltic pump. This frame's also going to be able to split into two halves that'll then be held together by magnets. I'm going to use some flexible filament to 3D print a wine stopper that's going to have a hole in it. I can snake some pneumatic line through and down into the bottom of the wine bottle itself. Once the whole thing is printed, I'm going to cover it with popsicle sticks and stain those. I'm also going to have a 3D printed nozzle coming out the front where the wine's going to come out. And by the way, inside, everything's powered by 18650 batteries. And underneath that nozzle up front will be a momentary limit switch. That switch, you press your glass up against and boom, out comes the wine. When you look at it, that should be the only piece, that switch, that doesn't look like it belongs on a wine barrel. Everything checks out perfectly. If you saw that last video where I used popsicle sticks to make a barrel, then you know that step one of that process is to boil those popsicle sticks so that they're soft enough to bend and maintain a new shape. Now, I didn't bother to film that part because it takes an hour of boiling. But Ken, by any chance, did you happen to accidentally let all the water boil off and allow that first batch to completely scorch, making the whole house smell like hickory smoke? What an oddly specific question. How dumb do you think I am? After getting the second batch sufficiently bendy from boiling, I just rubber banded them to the barrel frame itself and then let them dry for a couple of days so they could fully bake into that new shape. So now that I've caught you up on all the things that I didn't film, let's watch the project go together. build video seems particularly disjointed. Well, there's a reason. That build was not easy, and it took place over the course of about eight or nine days, during which I had to frequently rebuild, redesign, and rethink from bottom up everything that I was doing, because none of it was right. 
So there are chunks that were recorded while I still had an older revision of hardware. There were chunks of the newer revisions of the design that I just flat out forgot to record. There was a lot going on. I regret everything. But despite all those setbacks, despite all the numerous mistakes that I made and the self-inflicted wounds along the way, I did get the thing put together. So let's get a good look at it before we test it out. Now that looks really good, but does it work? Let's find out. Disappointed! Um, that's kind of slow. That's kind of really, really slow. Um, so at first I thought that this was like a voltage issue, but I checked and nope, voltage is not the issue. So at this point I thought, let's just for the heck of it, take a quick look at the product page for the pump that I ordered. And it was about that point that I noticed that the pump that I purchased is only capable of about 100 milliliters per minute. All right, now wait a minute. How many milliliters are in a wine glass? Hold up. All right, that would mean... Yeah, it would take about 90 seconds to fill a wine glass. This could take forever. All right, what I should have done in the first place is a little bit of research. One, I could read the product page for the thing that I'm about to buy for this project. That would have been nice. But two, I should have looked into how people typically do liquid dispensers because this isn't it. Peristaltic pumps that draw the liquid up and out through that one tube, that's not the way they do it. Typically, the way that it's done is you'll have two tubes going in there and you pump in air and then the liquid will come up and out the other tube. Super simple. Now, obviously, I didn't do that. At this stage, I've got a couple of different options, but my number one is probably to stop, redesign the whole thing for a new motor, a new pump, a new design with new pneumatic fittings, new stuff fitting in this thing, or... So I made this awesome whiskey barrel liquor dispenser. I, I see what you did there. I should probably add a research phase, preferably somewhere before the design and the assembly phases kick off. Uh, maybe I'll learn my lesson. Maybe I won't. You'll have to stick around until next time to find out. At this point, if you're still with me, you're already my favorite viewer of all time. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. I screwed this one up.